CDK46 inhibitors uh, have made a significant difference uh, in how we treat patients with metastatic hormone receptor positive HER2 negative breast cancer. Uh, there are several trials um, that added CDK46 inhibitor to endocrine therapy, either at, uh, at first line or subsequent lines of treatment that, that have shown to improve uh, progression-free survival, uh, and also in some has shown to improve overall survival. Uh, that therefore, you know, CDK46 inhibitors have become the frontline therapy uh, and the uh, treatment of choice for most women with uh, metastatic hormone receptor positive for negative breast cancer. So then the challenge um, uh, becomes what to do after the tumor progress on CDK46 inhibitors. Uh, there has the previous studies um, or previous um, um, uh, previous trials of CD, uh, of, for example, mTOR inhibitor with Everlimus uh, or um, endocrine therapy um, were mostly uh, tested in the setting of without prior CDK46 inhibitor. So the challenge is, you know, how would these treatments um, do, you know, in the setting of CDK46 inhibitor progression? So can we give additional hormonal therapy uh, and would M2 inhibitors be effective? In addition, the question uh, is, can, do you need to um, uh, continue the CDK46 inhibitor? Or uh, if you switch to a different CDK46 inhibitor, that would be, uh, uh, that would still make a difference, you know, still be uh, beneficial for patients' treatments. So the review um, highlighted uh, some of the challenges in what we have. Uh, at least uh, recently in the BILEAV trial, uh, they tested the opalacid uh, post-CDK46 inhibitor, and that has shown uh, fairly good efficacy with about 50% of the patients to benefiting from opalacid uh, even after CDK46 in inhibitor progression. So I think uh, that is, uh, uh, so for patients with pig 3 c mutated tumor, um, opalacid would would still be an option. Um, the previous um, uh, approval for Apalisib is based on the SOLAR1 trial. Uh, that was mostly in patients who had endocrine um, uh, resistant, who had prior disease progression on endocrine therapy, and very few women had CDK46 inhibitor. And then in regards to M2 inhibitor, there were um, a couple of the retrospective studies uh, that have shown that um, there's still efficacy of this class of drugs. And um, uh, in several uh, real-world um, uh, analysis of how patients were treated post-CDK46 inhibitor, um, approximately 50% of the patients were still uh, able to benefit from uh, additional endocrine therapy or combination uh, with targeted agents. Uh, so there are trials ongoing to evaluate whether um, um, a different CDK46 inhibitor, such as a bemaciclib, would still be effective after progression on um, pelbociclib or ribociclib, uh, or the same um, CDK46 inhibitor, for example, the PACE trial is looking at whether giving pelbociclib after disease progression on pelbociclib would be uh, still beneficial. And so there are multiple trials um, ongoing. Uh, there was a triplet study of um, Trinity trial uh, that assessed uh, the uh, combination of uh, ribociclib in combination with um, Everlimus and Examestin post CDK46 inhibitor progression and had a, uh, I believe, the uh, clinical benefit rate of over 40%, uh, which is promising. So um, definitely, this is a very active uh, research area, and um, uh, the mechanism of disease progression after CDK46 inhibitors are uh, still being uh, investigated, and the mechanism may be multiple um, rather than uh, everybody uh, could benefit from the same treatment. So um, it probably um, individualized approach would be needed.